Hey everybody, John Capobianco here again. The first video was how we can create a new NFT, a digital twin, append state and configuration to our parent, and then update our parent. That's only one half of the flow. Now that I have this immutable data in the cloud on a distributed ledger, it can become my source of truth. I no longer have to hit the network directly. I can hit my source of truth in the distributed ledger on ShimmerNet and do some miraculous things. Let's take a look at some of those things. So the first thing I'm going to do is create automated network documentation. So I'm going to run this script. And what you're going to see is PyETS is actually going to connect to the ShimmerNet. Here's the API for Build5. So a Build5 API. And I'm using this Build5 API to create documentation. And you can see all my documentation starting here. So let's start with what we get. We have the show version ledger. So this is that data that you saw in the ledger. And I'm just going to format it here as JSON. And this should look familiar to you because this is what we committed from PyETS. But now I have this JSON and each iteration of it throughout the history and life cycle of this device. For example, I have two records for show version in this case, but it could be the entire history of this device's show version. We have it as YAML as well, if you prefer it in YAML, infrastructure as code. We have it as CSV. Now this is a magical file because I can work with it like a spreadsheet. We can see that, right, over time, and I have all of that show version, um, you know, the uptime, for example, is different. The version number might change over the history and life cycle of this device. We have it all as a CSV spreadsheet. Now, beyond the CSV spreadsheet, we have some more files. We have an HTML data table, which is basically that same CSV but we can also drag and drop these things. We can print this. We can, um, I don't want to print it. Uh, we can get it as CSV. We can specify the column visibility that we want to see in this, how many rows we want, we can see the whole history of this device. And it actually has a search and a filter. If I did 16.9, right, it's going to reflect at the 16.9. We can also filter on individual fields here um, if we find one that's different. Now, they're very much the same, but here, right, I could do one day and filter. So HTML data tables, again, all from this shimmer. This is the source on the shimmer net, the transaction block, with my pre and my post, which actually renders out as these. Uh, here's a markdown table. We want it in markdown. Now, speaking of markdown, we can do lots of neat things with mermaid. So here's a mermaid class diagram for UML, for the modeling language. We have our class diagram. We have entity relationship diagrams, which are pretty big, but um, we see all the entity relationships here. We have a flow chart, and you can see all of the different fields and their values as a flow chart in mermaid for each record, by the way, right, through time. We have a mermaid mind map. Now I'll show you two different mind maps. There's the mermaid mind map, which looks like this, and there's the show version and all the different interconnections. And then we also have a mind map in mark map. Uh, I clicked the wrong button there. I want this. So now we actually have it as a mind map that we can interact with and collapse and view these different fields, all from the Build5 API. Right? And we have this wonderful interactive mind map of the show version and the different records throughout time. So, next, the other thing we can do, I'm just going to adjust this script, is run PyETS tests against this data. So in this PyETS job, what I'm going to do is, and I'll show you some of this code, um, here's my test code, I'm going to set up a threshold of 1693 and then test the version key and see if it equals, so here's my table and everything passed because the threshold, right, the actual version matches the threshold. 
So I can do network automation testing and we can see that this passed. Now, if I adjust this, let's just say 17 has come out and I wanna see if my ledger is in adherence to version 17. Well, now this test should fail twice and, um, and give us the failed output. So the last thing that we can do, well, not the last thing, the last thing that I'm gonna show you today is artificial intelligence integration. We're going to run a different PyETS job. And what this one's going to do is ask a question. So here's my AI code. I'm going to run a lang chain against the data and then ask it, what can you tell me about the show version information? And as you can see, here's the question and we're just waiting for AI to answer it. Again, this is from the build five API JSON data that I committed as an immutable NFT, a digital twin. So here, is AI's analysis of the show version. Systems chassis is this with the serial number of that. It was compiled by this on Wednesday, March, right? It's iOS XE 16.93, a human chat-like interface. Now the point here is that we can do this in two directions now. We can commit digital twins, and now we can read from those digital twins and make documentation, perform testing, perform audit trails, perform AI activities without ever actually touching the network. We're democratizing this network state so that you don't need a jump box and a SSH key, you know, and a, an RSA key maybe, or a duo or, right? All of the friction between the developers who want to do network automation and solutions with network, network state and the actual access to get that data this way, we, we, you know, we could run a, a routine that updates our, our NFT data. And then that script that I've run, the scripts that I just ran now, would just add rows to the ledger as we write to it. So build five API, really easy to use. I have network documentation, PyTS tests, and open AI chat GPT artificial intelligence integrated build five API. Thank you for watching and your interest.